Oh, hi. I have a confession to make. These guys, they don't know it, but I'm actually a seedling killer. Yep, I'm a serial seedling killer. Welcome to Tiny Garden Habit, my name is Adriana and I garden in beautiful Transylvania, Romania, Zone 6B. And this channel is all about how to garden in small spaces, how to make the most out of a small plot. Today I am in my growing room and I want to share with you the five most important factors to get fantastic seedlings every single try. Now, provided that you have good seeds, because that's the number one thing you need to get right, you need to have seeds that aren't expired and have a good germination rate. But let's set that aside for a moment and assume that you already have good seeds. The most important thing that you need to get right is having clean, sterile soil. So start your seeds in starting mix, which is what you get at the store, basically. Do not, I repeat, do not uh, get garden soil into your module trays. I made that mistake, I wanted to experiment, but also I didn't have such a good starting mix. And I thought, well, seeds germinate in the garden all the time. Why do I need a special mix for that? And about 80% of my seedlings were killed by damping off disease because garden soil holds a lot of bacteria, fungus and mold and this can affect very tiny seedlings because when you sow something directly in the garden you throw a bunch of seeds in there and most of them don't make it so only about 20 to 30 percent of them actually germinate. I'm using the starting mix that's a combination of peat moss and sand and I'm going to enrich it with a couple more things. First of all, I'm going to, to add some perlite to it to ensure better drainage. And I'm also going to add some compost. In this case, it's vermi compost, but it can be regular compost. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm adding about one part compost to four to five parts of starting mix. I'm doing this because when the seedlings are about three to four weeks old, they want nutrition from the soil. And if you just have some sterile starting mix, they will need regular feedings. I don't want to do those feedings, so I'd rather just have highly nutritious worm castings that will ensure my seedlings have all the nutrition they need. So this is vermicompost. And I'm gonna mix it all together. And lastly, I am going to pre-moisten this starting mix with water because it's better to handle this material when it's kind of damp. Let's fill up our trays without making too much of a mess. The last step you want to do is press the compost down so that you don't have that many air pockets and add compost to fill the rest of those holes and that's pretty much it. You're ready to sew and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. What I like to do when I sow seeds indoors is uh, just poke holes with this 
little pencil eraser thingy and I don't make the holes too deep just about this deep because the rule of thumb is to have seeds planted at about twice their depth and if you are planting seeds indoors they're going to quickly germinate and you don't want them very deep anyway of course it all depends on the size of the seed so if you have gigantic broad beans or peas you want to have a hole bigger than this one but this is my process and what I end up doing is uh, just sprinkle the number of seeds I, I need in here and then I just cover it and press it down or you can add some more soil. So that's my process. The second thing you need to be aware of is uh, water because you can do a lot of mistakes by just overwatering or underwatering your seedlings. I know I did. Now, first of all, if you keep your seedlings in a place that is cold and damp, like I did last year, I kept my seedlings in a cold frame and uh, it was definitely cold and damp all the time. That is a major factor for uh, fungal disease, for damping off disease. Because fungus is really everywhere, um, you can even get it inside a growing room like this one. So make sure you protect your seedlings by letting the top layer of soil dry a little bit before watering them. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, what I mean in this footage right here. But you can, uh, you can go too much in between watering and you can actually not water your seedlings enough and they will basically just die of thirst so make sure you don't do that either and thirdly you can over water your seedlings and if they're not damping off you can go as far as drowning your seedlings their roots won't have any air and that is also going to kill them so use water in in two ways until your seeds germinate keep everything pretty moist you can put a plastic lid on top like a dome or some gardeners even put some some uh, foil some plastic wrap foil on top so that they prevent water from evaporating but once your seeds have germinated and you have tiny seedlings um, stop watering from above and start watering from below the trays so basically uh, this will saturate the modules with water but it will uh, discourage uh, damping off disease to attack your seedlings now moisture is important for germination but so is temperature which brings me to tip number three make sure you have your growing room uh, or your greenhouse or polytunnel warm enough for germination now most seeds germinate in between temperatures of a 68 Fahrenheit to 86 Fahrenheit which is 20 to 30 degrees Celsius which in the dead of winter in February it's kind of hard to obtain. Now of course cool weather crops like peas, um, carrots, onions, kale, cabbages, stuff like that they will definitely germinate in lower temperatures it will just take them a lot more time but with warm weather crops like peppers, um, eggplants, tomatoes they absolutely need the extra warmth so how do you do this? well, easy until the seedlings germinate simply keep them indoors in your house they don't need light very few seeds need light to germinate they just need the moisture and the heat uh, secondly you can use a hotbed inside a greenhouse or simply outside covered with a hoop and uh, plastic wrap or something like that 
Uh, you can use a heating pad, an electric heating mat that's especially designed for gardening. Or you can just have a grow room like we have in here and make sure the room is warm for that purpose because this is a really old house where I keep my seeds, seedlings. Uh, we are uh, constantly feeding that wood stove with wood. Tip number four is ensuring that your seedlings get enough light. Now when they're young, your seedlings will need a lot of light, which means that even if you place your seedlings in a very sunny spot on a windowsill, let's say, I'm sorry to say, but most of the time they will lean to the window and they will get a little bit leggy. Well, that's not to say that you won't have good plants and that they won't recover, but you want them to start off right. So either start them in a greenhouse where they have plenty of sun, in a cold frame that is situated in the sunniest spot of your garden, or start them indoors like I did here with my Mars Hydro Grow Lights. Not sponsored, I just love them. And uh, make sure that they get about um, 16 out of 24 hours that they get plenty of light. I have my lights set up for um, 30%, 16 hours a day. I have a timer. They go on at 6 a.m. in the morning and they go off at 10 o'clock at night and we'll see how that goes. Now light is really important if even um, when germinating, if, you, if your seeds germinate and you're not there for the day and they don't have enough light, even in one single day or half a day they will grow so high because they're searching for that crucial light and finally number five is giving your seedlings enough space now that doesn't mean you have to sow one seedling in a huge pot or a module. But it also means avoiding making this mistake and choosing tiny, tiny module trays like I did last year. Last year I wanted to fit as many seeds, as seedlings as possible inside uh, tiny cold frames. And so I bought really small ones. But what this did, uh, it made the seedlings become root bound very fast and it didn't hold on to enough moisture and water when the seed seedlings needed uh, enough water. And also the seedlings were drowning in water too fast whenever I watered this thing. So I fixed this mistake this year and I bought, this one is a 60 cell module tray. It's kind of similar to what Charles Dowding has, but he lives in a very wet climate, so I don't think he has issues with uh, these guys drying out. But I didn't have success with this. So what I did was I went ahead and bought a much larger 72 um, uh, cells tray, and you can actually see how deep um, one is compared to the other. And what this does is give the roots much more room to thrive, especially with the multi-sowing method in which you sow anywhere from four to eight seeds, and then you have a lot of roots tangling in that module tray. So that wraps it up. Five tips to get great seedlings every single time. If you have found this video useful, please give a like. It helps my channel grow. Uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. And like in every single video, I can't let you go before saying hi to my fluffy dog, Smoofy. So Smoofy and I will see you next time.